farm priority offlaner. Not the, the kind which just goes around after one item, you know, try to create space for your team, just old style, but... I don't know, it felt like a bit off. He's a very aggressive player, Velo, but his aggression is different to more... Of, he's not really, a, let's say, a playmaker. He's not, the, like you said, he doesn't really go around and make plays and get ganks and create space. He's more of a, a player that abuses the lane a lot by using aggression. He was the one who um, put Abaddon in the C region as meta when Abaddon offlane was really popular. He also played Venno offlane when no one played Venno at all. Uh, Legion as well, he used to play it a lot in the offlane. He's a player that abuses the lane by creating space uh, with his own aggression. But a lot of these heroes now are generally countered and laning emphasis is so demanding these days, since TI especially, that he can't really do what he used to do in the past. So. He, this is not really his patch, and I feel in general WG has a lot of players that you need to play around in a sense, which makes it very hard for this team to kind of mesh and work together. They do have some very unique individuals and has had a lot of glory in the past, but I think it's going to take a lot of time for these guys to really gel together, especially with the addition of Fira and Screen as well, which is from a different region completely. Um, I don't know how it they communicate, if it's everything is fine, if they all speak English very good. But compared to Maneski, I think it's going to be a, a challenge for them to make it work. Yep, and going up such a strong t you know, under the leadership where they have such they have a really, really strong foundation. Some of these players they've really played together before. Remaining. Like let's face it, Mushi and Boogie they played together and you Ice and Jabs they played together and of course Ice has played together with Mushi and DK. So there's some natural synergy and natural understanding, which in a sense, when a Warriors gaming, it kind of feels like they're kind of lacking. I don't want to sound like I'm being too hard on them, but it's kind of the truth. And at the same time, I, know I agree with what you said about where they have a roster, you need where players, you need to play around them. Like Miracle is one example, you know, with first departure. But okay, I mean, enough about the players. Let's talk about the drafts. We have the first phase already conduct already finished and Necrophos Disruptor. And Mineski, you know, this, they had second pick, so they went straight for a full ice combo of the A, a and Tuscar. Yeah, I mean, the A pick here is a counter pick for the Necroforce. Obviously, you can just deny him from healing his team or himself. At the same time, it gives his laning capabilities for their team a lot more diversity because AA is one of the strongest laning support position fives in the game with the chilling touch obviously being played in the laning phase. But I find the disruptor pick... In the first game, they picked Visage very early into the game, which I feel is very bad because Visage is not a flexible hero in what it does early game, and he needs certain requirements to actually be played. That's why in most cases, most teams played it and picked it on the second phase, third or fourth pick. But now we see Disruptor as well being picked up in the first phase, which is a little weird as well, which is very similar to the sense of you need a scenario where Disruptor is actually going to be good. But they just nonetheless picked it straight up into their lineup, um, which means that Maneski can decide whether to abuse the fact that they're not so flexible in terms of, let's say, going aggro tri lane. Visage and aggro very weak, as shown in the previous game, it just didn't work out well for them and they needed to rotate the lanes back to the safe lane the Luna and he lost a lot of farm and he also died a few times up there and this might be a similar case as well either that or they'll just trade the tri lanes once they're just going to both go to the safe lane trials and just trade farm but Mineski has the option to also go aggro if they feel like WG's lineup is not strong in that area so I just don't like WG's opening too much. The, the support opening needs to be something more consistent and that can be more flexible in what it does. But as you can see, if you're in band again um, from Mineski, we do see the Puck now being banned by WG. <laughs> Respect ban from last game. Void also being banned, mainly because you can't really uh, contest the Void safe lane if it, they would pick up. And they go back for the The Marana should be a mid pick, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, um, Fiesto played a lot, I believe, right? Mm -hmm. I think in the 4TI, it was one of his main heroes. I was a um, bit um, skeptical about the disruptor. I mean, sorry, the faces void ban because I thought you would want to like combo something up, you know, get some really good setup with the static storm. So at least if the roll comes in, it's a really nice turnaround kind of you know skill you can use. But yeah, 
Okay, Murana Min, let's talk about this a bit because we've seen this a lot in our pubs recently or even like the re- the return of the right click Murana. You know, we, we used yeah. to see like that Aghanim's Murana, you know, Blink of the EB and the Dagon, all that stuff. But now that we see, like, what is it about this right click Murana? Like, why is this suddenly back into the meta? Hmm. I think it's just been a really a forgotten hero. He, he, I mean, the Aghanim's build is not good because it relies too much time to build up the Aghanims to be able to push lanes, and even if you have Aghanims, it doesn't do that much damage. Not as much damage as like a Maelstrom or the Fusil build-up from Marana. But the Marana offers everything in a sense. He's a strong mid-laning hero. He might not be the strongest, but he has a lot of damage even if he's not ahead. Mainly because of his spell, Starfall Arrow. He's mobile, he can TP react to ganks, he can counter-initiate, um, he can also be played as a setup, like they pick Batrider here, they can Lasso into an arrow. So he has diversity in how to play the game. Um, just the problem is laning mechanics is a little weaker because he doesn't have that much damage. But nonetheless, if played very well, such as EG, Sumel, we used to play Mirana middle all the time, even though it kind of fell off, it, it can work out. It just really depends on the early game on how you play it. So we're gonna see the ice ice size bat rider this game. Unless of course they decide to put, you know, Nana into the bat rider this game. Seems a bit unlikely, but Alright, let's we'll see how Warriors Gaming decide to conclu- or the, you know finish off the second Warriors phase of the draft. Well nice. oh, there we have it now. Okay, it's gonna slock. be the, the Miracle Slock. Um I haven't really seen this pick. in a while. Is this a good pick? But this pretty much dictates. I mean the slock pick against Marana and the, the Bat Rider is extremely good. You can't leap um out of the the Marana, uh, sorry, out of the Slark pounds, <laughs> and the Batrider can't also just lasso the Slark because he can Dark Pact uh, if he sees it coming. He can also get rid of the stickies in the laning phase with Dark Pact. So it's a pretty good overall pick against these two heroes, the two core heroes from Maneski. But at the same time, it takes quite a long time for the Slark to actually be able to fight, Here's which could be a problem man. here because it's not necessarily good against AA's Blast since he can't regen when he ults if he is a blaster. Mm-hmm. So it looks like they're just banking on Fira to have a really, really good lane if this is a Necrophos mid, which should be a Necrophos mid. Necrophos against Marana. Um, unless, of course, you know, I feel like the gank synergy is actually pretty good here coming out from the Mineski draft. Like, if you have a yeah. snowball or shards, you, you, you just choke him out and you corner him out and you let the Marana go in with all those nukes. We have the Cold Vortex, you know, Necrophos or Ghost Shroud, or even with that, without, without it, he's still gonna die really quickly. So, we'll see how Warriors Gaming decided to finish off their draft. Although, I kind of feel they may be edging to something like a Timbersoft or Velo, perhaps, one of his trademark heroes. Or, what, what do you think? Yeah. I think there's too much magic damage, and Batrider is one of the better heroes as well against Timbersaw. I just feel it's gonna be very hard for um, Fly Solo Sanking to get much here. Okay, Legion. Legion's pretty good overall against Batrider because you can also break the Lasso on someone who got caught. But I feel like the laning is going to be another big problem here. I mean, Necro is now definitely middle, there's no doubt about it. Legion's in the off lane, they have a tri lane Slark, they won't contest, obviously, they don't have the option to do so. Like I said from the beginning of that Disruptor pick. But at the same time here, Mineski could go aggro if they decided to do so. If not, they'll pick a carry that will be able to zone out the Legion very easily and scale better than the WG lineup. I feel like the early game is so much stronger though already than Minus. No, so they do pick up the Luna and yeah, that could be that aggressive trialing you were referring to. Bat Rider against Legion Commander is actually a pretty good darn matchup if you ask me. And if they contest the Slark lane, making sure that it's really hard for him to farm, it means that Fly Solo is going to have to play from really, really far behind again. So this is where the question is, like, you, you already pointed out that, you know, as a sanking this game, you're not going to have a good time getting a dagger unless you somehow get lucky with a few kills. Yeah. And I feel like around this roster, like, you know, when you arrested this draft, when you have three farm intensive cores, like, where is the sanking going to get the dagger from? Yeah, I haven't really been a fan of sanking that much lately, mainly because, unlike Earthshaker, he actually needs a blink to get into the fight and use his ultimate, whereas Earthshaker can just fish it from afar, even if he's behind. Um, but this game, if they do decide to go aggro, Mineski's lineup that is, it's going to really depend on Velo to make the play this game, because he's the only hero that will have 
a pretty good time early game against Batrider. It's not the best matchup, but he can always get rid of the stickies with his uh, heal. Um, but his Blink Dagger play will be what will change the game for WG. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And, um, okay, just worth mentioning, it's Miracle is going to be playing the Necrophos mid. He's going up against Nana, I believe, and, yeah, whenever I see Mushi and the Luna, this pretty much indicate, kind of most of the time indicates it's going to be an aggro lane, and they're going to contest the Feral Slark. So, this will yeah, be this interesting to see. Yeah, this is a very weak lane. Yeah, Double G's lane is so weak. Disruptor, Sanking, and Slark. Disruptor and Slark doesn't really offer too much early game. And then you're up against a chilling touch, a uh, lunar tri lane. <laughs> Good luck. I think the key will be um the camp. I mean, if you can get the pools going, the small camp pool straight away, then it'll be very easy to play this. And as you can see, the sanking straight away TP towards the bottom lane to put that ward and spot any. Um, rotations, like enemy TP smokes as well toward the small camp. But he won't be able to see it. Jabs ran through the middle lane. He does place the ward. He does not block the small camp like I thought he would. This is an interesting ward. Like, okay, what's the reasoning for putting this here? Is it because you just want to make sure, you know, there are no stacks? Or, like, why would you... This is the first time I'm seeing the ward actually placed here. This ward here is mainly to spot the enemy sanking rotations from mid to bottom, because that's the only two lanes he can play right now. And they're not going to go aggro trial lane from the looks of it. Batra is going to be just playing bottom, they're going to have a trial lane top. Uh, potential with the Tusker just roaming between top, middle, and actually maybe just bottom and middle. He might not even play top, because of the AA he can solo zen out the, the Legion Commander on its own with the Luna. Hmm, interesting. I really thought they'd go aggro here to make uh, WG's lineup very stale in the laning phase, but it doesn't seem like they want to go that way. I mean, on the bright side, this they could also be they want to give Fiero a good... Uh, or rather, I mean, like, they want to give the Luna a good farm. Because that means they can take towers a bit quicker. Like, you don't really have to force yeah. the issue of contest. It also means that this could be confidence, you know, you don't want to be... Taking unnecessary Jibami, risk. Jabami! Necro is in trouble! Oh! oh. Miracle! Nice. J Jibami got Great play by Manette. They went there very late to contest the rune, and then he just ice shard blocked him in. That's a huge kill. He yeah. does get the, the rune, I believe, right? Yeah, he did get the rune. But still, first blood to the supports pretty much means, you know, you do get some nice gold. Ward money. Yep. And as you can see, they're fully zoning out the the Legion command of both supports. Sanking does go up there to help him out, get some levels, because Legion doesn't really want to go to the jungle, it's just not efficient enough, he needs to play in the lane. And he did go for the PMS as well on top of that, to help him play in the lane, so if he oh, can't play in the lane, that's a big problem. With the chilling touch, nice double nice. burst strike. Oh, fly solo, good stuff. Alright, but with the chilling touch, you know, they do take quite a bit of harassment damage. I mean, it is, you know, always frog. I feel like it's not utilized enough, plus 50 damage. At level 1 is quite yeah. sick. Yeah, it's crazy. And the thing as well is you can put it on your allies while they're mid air attacking. So that they don't get that animation slow, animation reduction. So that's a, a tip for you guys. Spam that in your pubs. That's actually a legit hero. <laughs> None of the Winter Wyvern off lane displayed by ISO size, please. Well, you asked for it, dude. I mean, you, you were all for it last game. <laughs> I mean, yeah, because it's ice oh, hold on. <laughs> Top lane. Okay, they try to get a nice choke onto fly solo, but he does burst strike out. Man, I'm really interested to see how Jabs is going to play on this Tuscar because he's, he had so much impact on that Night Stalker. And now Fiero, you can actually see that, you know, he's pretty much alone. Yeah. I mean, it's not a terrible matchup. I mean, Slark can also just stay in the lane, dark pack, enough stickies, get a stick, but... Obviously, the Bat Rider will be pretty well off in terms of farm here. <coughs> Shots. Man, Jabs is just being the biggest pain in the ass to fly solo at least. Although... Okay, they're just both gonna trade a couple of hits in to say hi. But over at the bottom half of the river, you know... Got a haste rune. Haste rune's making this, you know, these games. I feel like we've seen Top this before. Top lane now. 
Should be nice. Velo it looks like Velo. Yep. I think he should be dead here. Mushi has enough mana for the Lucent Beam. Double, double bar strike. But Velo, where is he running? All the way to the west. Lucent Beam. Couple of clicks in. Yeah, he should be dying here. And they get the kill on Ninja Boogie. Bottom lane as well, Batrider right getting caught. He should be okay yep. here. Even goes with the taunt, so he's okay. Yeah, and the lane's pushing as well, which means the Barrow is going to get his level 4 very soon on top of that. Yeah, Fear is not going to have a good lane by any means. And this Disruptor... Yeah, it just seems they like they're winning all three lanes here now for Mineski. They just don't have any control. And Mineski running away with the laning phase right now. I mean, 3-0 on the kill score. Merkel mid is kind of struggling to Nana. You know, he's 19-0 compared to the 24-5. So this is going to be a bit tough, but okay, Firefly already used, and I don't know, like, this game, is this like a drums game for the Bat Rider, or do you want to say, like, Blink Dagger? Hmm, that's actually an interesting call. I mean, the Blink Dagger secures the AA Blast later on as well, but if they want to emphasize in lanings and not actually roam a lot, they can just get the drums and play all the lanes, and keep the dominance the dominance going in the early game so that the Luna can just play his own game at top side. I think that would be the probably the, the go-to plan here for Mineski. They don't really want to rush the game. They do want the, the Luna to have enough items to siege without being, you know, in danger of getting killed while they siege. So the Batrider playing the lane constantly applies the supports to stay with the, the Slark or the support the Disrupt to stay with the Slark. Meanwhile, they so I believe drums uh -huh. will probably be the situation here. Okay, okay. Yeah, I, I can see that because we we do see a lot of drums pickups on bat riders these days. But hold on, you know, middle lane they are trying to put some pressure onto Nana. They know he's really low. Like if they can get one bar strike onto him, that's a kill. And they also know that Jab has yep. been basically hanging around the top half of the map near their secret shop. Velo, you said that it's not efficient for him to be jungling. Well, he hasn't had a choice. Mushi's been controlling the creep wave really nicely with Boogie. Boogie's really taken off a couple of pulls. And he's going to get his level 4 off this. So, yeah, like even the EXP wise. It's just wise, not the start they want. Yeah, they're just getting too good of a start right now, I Mineski mean, feels. That route is also just starting to jungle a little bit. He's going to be 5 very soon as well. And the Sankings has been forced to play top, although they can't even allow Velo to get the start he wants. He does have level 4 now, but his item progression is not ideal. He's starting to build all these little items to help him stay in the lane, such as uh, the Raindrop, be a mess with extra regen on top of that. And now he's going up to go for an Iron Talon. This is quick buy. This is really bad. But okay, over in the bottom lane, Fero just having a bit of a tangle with Ice Ice Size. Does slightly come on, on top. Maybe when he gets level 6. But he knows that Ice Size is really low. Fero, nice stuff. Bad Rider did complete his tranquil, so he will heal all that damage back up in the cat. Now the haste rune for another. Okay, they're just gonna use the shrine. But top lane, let's see if they can make a move here. They want to try, yep, they will get the burst strike onto the Ancient Apparition. Do they have a glimpse? Should be their first kill of the game with the Cold Vortex. One more right click, down he goes. So screen, they do get that, you know, one kill at last. Something finally going their way. Yep. Middle they lane. will not achieve much out of this though. It is a position 5 they killed with a rotation of the Disruptor, but they're not going to stop the Luna from farming. They're oh. not going to be able to get Tower here as well. Miracle so, needs to be careful. it's just a, a rotation so that they apply pressure on the other side of the map while the Slark farms at bottom lane against the Batrider. The Slark is doing much better than I thought. Like, he's 34 and 17. He's doing better than Luna in terms of CS. And on top of that, he hasn't died to the Batrider, considering it's, a, it's basically a 1v1 matchup. Like, he's quite confident to lane against this Batrider by yep. himself. And that's why they picked the Slark here into the Batrider. Uh, and it's just going to get better because he's got his ultimate. He can start regening now and looks like they're going to try and go on the Batrider. But this might not really pay out how they're expecting it to. Oh, might be will enough. they get him? Oh, yes they will. But it brings, it brings everyone really, really low. But over the top lane, they will find well, Velo. Yep. 
Middle lane the looks Necro like... matchup has been really paying off now. Uh -huh. Morana can't really just stay in the lane against the Necro. Slowly, the Necro will always win out, mainly because of his uh, sustainability in the lane and also the aura, which just pokes down the Morana little by little. So his farm is going very well, and it seems like um, WG is slowly catching up in terms of CS. So, not really going as bad as I thought he would. It's just going to depend on these next Hold um, on, the supports are rotating rotations. in. They want to go into Miracle here. They have a Rose Strike. Ice Vortex is going to be there with a the Snowball, and they actually will kill Miracle off. Looks like Fly Solo about to follow him into the grave. Do they have any detection? No, they do not, but they have an arrow. And 8 seconds if he doesn't move. <laughs> He's going to have to make a move soon. He's got uh, stun as well here, so here we go, here we go. Oh, run! Shots. Run, boy! Get the kill! Uh. Lucent Beam, Mushy, great rotation. And I do believe he gets, what, a kill and a half? Yeah. So, okay, Mineski. Very nice movement there. And finally, they will kill Miracle, which means that Nana can at least get some relief back into this lane. Well, lanes are not going too bad. Um, they will have to start trying to get Tau soon, Maneski's lineup. They do have the Luna um, ult in 40 <laughs> seconds. He's going to go for a Wraith Ban as well. Wait, yep, he's got his Aquila now, so it should be soon. Their smoke play with the Luna, with the ultimate as well being up. I think they're going to go for it very soon, actually. Looks like, yep, Jabs has the smoke on him, and here we go. He's under attack. I feel like this Drums is the big difference right now, right? Like from the bat rider as well. Yeah, but we call it in again for the laning phase. Oh, Mushi, he shows his face. They want to go into Miracle mid. They have the shots. They will block him off, but it won't exactly block him off. And there goes Snowball. Arrow off the mark. And now the bar strike. They will go for a turnaround. They have the Reaper Scythe. Should be a kill. So Miracle just going to regen all of that damage back up. Mushi going to pop the Eclipse. Okay. Actually, still kept alive. Still not dead. Clips they wanted, and this might be a turnaround. Arrow? Oh, nope. Yeah, you better respect. That was strangely awkward. Mushi just walked up yeah. confidently. He's like, "Fight me!" And there was a few mistakes though made by there. The the Tasker's ice shard not blocking in the necro, and then when he snowballed in, the arrow did not hit after the snowball stun, which is very low duration stun, but still, then they couldn't. Just burst down the necker anymore at that point. <laughs> and Velo, because of his jungling items, looks like his greed is starting to pay off. Like he's basically above the net worth of Isis Ice, just by a tiny bit, even if it's not a lot. And the drums on the way for Isis Ice, which means he can start going around creating space. And they, you know, these players should not be, except for the European players, they should not be strangers to the way and the kind of impact which Ice can actually create. Because on faces, this is what he always used to do. Bottom lane now. Yep, should be in some trouble. Oh, misses the pounce. I survive. He can actually try to get the kill here. Break, but Screen. Oh, can okay, no, he TP's out. Slack wasn't Meanwhile, in any top danger. Lane. All right. Yeah. Do, do you think they can get a duel here? We haven't seen a duel yet. Velo, he's actually going under the tower, and decides against it. Doesn't want to take the unnecessary risk. And we'll just yeah, go to the creep way. They do have the catapults here, so they can potentially get the tower here. The Luna did TP bottom, right? So it's going to be a trade-off. Oh, they want to go on the Fero. He pops the Shadow Dance, knows he has to get out, but Ice is on pursuit. He has the Firefly. He has the Firefly. All right, there we go. He's going to chase him down with the Napalm stack, decides against it, sees the TP, and is like, okay, happy. You know, space created. But he doesn't know the TP got cancelled. Fly Soul is going to be TPing hmm. in right under Mushi's nose. The thing is, Velo already cancelled his TP, so he can't come to the fight anymore. Knowing this, Sanking did TP Burst right strike. after it, which I feel Oh no, but mistake. here comes Nana to clean up shop. So they get the tier 1 tower and the kill. But here comes Fiero with the Reaper Scythe, they will find Nana. Comes back, they want to find the I Ice Bat Rider, but they will not succeed. Alright, so... You know, it's good that at least, you know, Miracle, he's getting that 4 staff on the way. The first item up. And actually looks like they still want to keep on going, but Fiero's still going to be poking around to the Bat Rider. Eclipse coming in, and he will die. Looks like Miracle might also be following him into the grave. Going to go and get those Tread Toggles in for the Death Pulse. And Mushi is still holding his ground. He wants to go back in for Miracle. Uh, it's, a, it's a tough kill, but okay. Yep. Velo is not too far off his Blink Dagger as well. Oh, that's good. And so, even the Sanking as well is going for a straight Blink Dagger. 
700 gold away. I like this time, like, the, you know, the net worth distribution seems a bit better. We talked about how the Sand King is probably going to have a slow dagger this game, but, you know, them playing the greedy and mushy and friends not really able to punish this is... This could hurt in the next five minutes, like, once the daggers come up for both sides. Yep, that's for sure. They won't have the blink dagger on Isis, Isis as well, since he opted to go for the drums build up, which means they won't be able to utilize the ice blast from AA that effectively anymore. They don't have that instant initiation. Tusker can snowball in, but it's not an instant initiation, which means enemies can react to it. They can either heal up, they can borrow strike away, they can just utilize Slark's ultimate. Whoever he ganks, they have an ability that can kind of help him, aside from the disruptor, obviously. So it's not going to be easy to get this Ice Blast to follow up after they jump in. Well, we'll have to see if he can prove you wrong. Big plays only. This is the playoff after all. So, don't forget that you have to win if you want to qualify for that main event in Book Arrest. So, okay. Ice as ice. Drums should be underway just about now. Mid lane being contested. They will get denied. Oh, Glyft. Jabaden. Arrow flying the in. The arrow comes out. And they denied. do get the deny. Ice Blast. Miracle. Don't walk back in. Oh, dear. Alright, immediate 4 star foul. Let's have the 4 star. Yep. Yeah. He's all good. And meanwhile, Blink Dagger bought up on Velo with the TP as well. They can actually try for a smoke play themselves. He's gone for the 20 EXP gain talent, which means that he's actually gonna scale pretty nicely. But over in the jungle, Slark being hunted. They want grilled salmon, and Isosize decides to, dark, uh, he's not that hungry after all. Alright, so. <laughs> but look at all they the do. rotations. Do you know friends. that Fear is at bottom and there's the rotation here. The Ice Blast is up oh, right now. Oh, Snowball looking for the shot. Oh, he the shot. does get the nice. effect on him, so he can't heal up here. Oh, no punch with no detection, detection, guys. No detection. Oh, please. Oh, if this was a CPUB, someone would be raging. Oh, Fear, it's okay. They, they burned him down anyways, piling up the Napalm stacks. It was a good cheeky play. Very, very unfortunate, but they want to pop the drums. They're actually looking for the kill here. If they can go they to Miracle, go for this. the Reaper side. Oh, he's actually going to get the kill, but the regen would not be enough. The killing speed going away to Mushi, who did pop the Eclipse. And Fly Soul now coming in with the Epicenter as well. They're going to use it with the duel. That's plenty of hate. Screen using an ultimate. I'm not sure what for. Maybe for that sigil, but unfortunately, it doesn't take any damage. So, yep. I didn't really understand this Luna pick too much in this game because it wasn't really just for sieging. But now after seeing the Necro getting popped down every time by his ultimate makes a lot of sense. It, one of the things about Necro is that you need to survive in the midst of the battle. And Luna has so much burst, you can't do that. So the Luna ulti is just really just for the Necro boss. This is quite an interesting pickup here. I just like the way Fero's using that Shadow Amulet to just play around with the Luna every time her arms are in the air. And now a smoke player coming out from Mineski. They want to try and outflank them, perhaps go behind a tier 1 tower, get Mushi to push out the lane. But Velo, here we go. We have a duel. He's going to blink out. Alright, Lucid Beam. Though. Ice Blast onto two! Beautiful play by Mineski. And you said that Ninja Boogie, he's going to have a tough time landing these Ice Blasts. He's like, <laughs> Ew, challenge accepted. Yeah. I'll take your tribute. I mean, that eight, was a great play there. 8 KMMR. Two core heroes down, and now they're going to go for probably two towers here as well. They do have Blink Dagger on Velo, and Sanking also has a Blink Dagger now. His epicenter is down, but let's see if they decide to push this. They can get some deep wards now. That's the, the great thing. This, these two tier ta uh, one towers down from the middle and top side, it means it's a lot easier for the supports to rotate into the enemy jungle and get those deep wards to spot the enemy rotations. Hmm, okay, I don't play the Mirana right click a lot, but what is the Lincoln supposed to be the first item pickup? Is this for the map? No, is this for um, the region? This game, the Lincoln's build up is mainly for the Legion's duel and the Necrofoss's ulti. And here we go, smoke rotation. It got revealed, but they don't know where exactly. A gets caught. Duel? duel. And that might be, that's a dual kill, for sure. Right, so second but nothing one. to it be achieved here though. They probably will push the tier 1 top, but I think they were going to give that away anyways. Dyer's top tower is under 
And this oh, did you get side. that deep ward uh -huh. by solo? He gets that ward near the ancients, which is really good. Uh huh. But unfortunately, they have a ward right under the sentry, and they do not know it. And meanwhile, you know, Mushi's just gonna use that MOM, clear out this big ancient stack, complete that BKB, and this is gonna be really big. That BKB is got could potentially catch Warriors Gaming off guard. Yeah. So like he's not Which gonna be a big up. There's no way he can die in the next. Oh well, unless he doesn't actually pop the BKB and get stunned. But if that doesn't happen, then he won't be ever killed in these next two fights. One more creep he needs for the BKB. Oh no, will he get it? Oh, the burrow onto two. Uh oh. But the moonlight shadow is gonna be there. They have no detection, and it actually looks like okay. They have the dust. So Sanking, Ice Blast is not going to land to him, but it's okay, they have more than enough damage to find one kill. And now using the lasso, okay, nice purge, Static Storm, zoning them out, and they want to try and turn around over here, in some serious trouble, now popping that BKB with the Reaper side, Miracle getting one kill, and they have to run out here, Velo on the run, but they have more than enough damage, and it's okay, Nana getting the kill. Fiero, but there's a sentry there, so 3 for 1, not a good trade, and looks like they'll make it a 4 for 1. Buy one, get one free, two times, used for Mineski. Yep. Another huge fight for Mineski here. They do showcase their BKB now as well. And their ultimates are down, so they're gonna have to just trade farm a little bit. While when WG is up, they need to make the play. They know their ulties are down. They they have a ward still there, or did it get dewarded? No, it got dewarded, so that's even gonna be harder to find pickoffs. But they do run straight top, as you can see, TP to the shrines. I believe they're all gonna TP to the shrines here as well. But Tusker spots out the Sand King, so that's not going to happen. Such a pity. Yeah, it's going to be a very hard scenario here to find pickoffs because the supports have very nice sentry placements here to spot the enemy, uh, well, enemy wards initially, but also the rotations. I mean, it's not like Fly Solo has been doing bad now that he has the Pink Dagger, but it just feels like. They, it's not enough. Like he hasn't. We haven't seen a big epi come out. Nana now almost has his Lincoln Sphere, and Mushi's actually going for a Lincoln as well after the BKB, which, which pretty much means how do you kill this guy? He's gonna pop the BKB for the Reaper Scythe if you can yeah. time it right, and with the Lincoln's means that you can pretty much never initiate onto him with the duel to keep him in place. Yep. This is this is. They're scary. going to have two Lincoln's as well. Once the Luna actually has the Lincoln's and the Marana has the Lincoln's as well, they're going to double Lincoln's the Luna, and he's just going to be sieging the towers so easily. And there's not much that can actually cancel it. There's glimpse that you can long range cancel the Lincoln's, but then who's going to cancel the other one? Sankey has to borrow strike out, like Lincoln borrow strike to cancel the Lincoln's and duel, and then Necro ulti. It's just going to be a very unlikely scenario. To pop two Lincolns and catch him before he actually BKBs. And now they're gonna get a good, you know, free tier to a tower, top lane, and okay, you said that the slug it's gonna take him a while to come online. How long more do you think he needs? Because he's only on a shadow bin Aquila. His item progression hasn't been there for a while, but he is going for a diffusal blade in the next item at least on his quick buy. Yeah, the thing is. I don't think Mineski scaling overall in terms of cores are better, but the fact that AA's ultimate cancels out Necro and Slark ceiling is a big factor in the later stages of the game. So I don't actually think they have the better Horror. scaling anymore. Tier 3 tower is actually taking a ton of damage. It's actually going to go down in 21 minutes in. The glimpse back onto the ice side with the Moonlight Shadow. They are thinking oh. about going back in. Oh no! Static Storm's not going to matter because the Ice Blast will finish off the Disrupted, it feels. And he's gone. He's gonna shatter right there. Yep, he will go down to Ninja Boogie, getting himself a nice kill, putting the sentry down, going for the duo immediately onto the battle rider. Bar strike coming in, and actually looks like they want to try and get a Reaper Cypher onto Ice Slice. Yes, he will go down. Five solo epicenter, not gonna do much. Mushi with the BKB now on the run, and Fero is just gonna try and get that kill with the pounce. Can he do it? He's trying for the slow fun miracles part. Snowball. And okay, it looks like Jabs is dead. But they do get the tier 3 tower, that's pretty big. Yep. A bit of a misplay there by Mushi. The fact that he popped his Mask of Madness didn't allow him to actually utilize his Eclipse, and they couldn't fight there, so... Yeah... Well, I guess he managed to live, and he almost has his uh, Lincoln Sphere next, so... I guess once he has it up, they're going to try and do that again. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty darn quick. And they, can, they know that there's very little that Warriors Gaming can do to actually stall this push. They have no deep push besides the overwhelming odds. Like, what do you do next? Besides the overwhelming odds, how do you... 
Like, how do you even stop the push? There's no way. Thunder Strike's not going to do much. The Burrow Strike, to use that when you already need to use it to cancel the Lincolns. You can feel a ton of issues just piling up on this list for Warriors Gaming. Like, the win conditions are just dwindling. Yeah. But and Fero has the only way WG can really play at this point is they need to start splitting up. They need to push the lanes up before Mineski just groups up and sieges down the towers. They do have Slark, they do have Sanking with Blink, they have a Legion with Blink. They are uh, able to do this kind of play. And if they do end up grouping up, they need to just drag it out. They won't be able to fight into the, the lineup of Mineski anymore. Um, especially since the tower is not even up right now, and it's funny to say like how I said that the they don't have the blink dagger on Batrider to combo with the A blast. They're not even going to go for it. They're going to rush a BKB straight after the Midas pickup. I mean, blink daggers for the weak. Ice 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 showing how to play Batrider, the confident way. Middle lane. Yep. And Nana, oh Nana wanna go for the duel here, can they? Well, nice snowball save! And might even get the Ice Mask to connect as well into the Warrior's Punch. Now he'll go for the duel, he will get the damage from Jabs. But that was still a pretty sick play, and Mushi's gonna find one with the lasso as well. Mushi finds two. And now they're gonna look for a bit more of the Moonlight Shadow still in effect. And can they find the Sand King? Ice Ice flying for on that Manta Ray. But okay, they put a sentry down, and that's about it. So that's gonna be a 2 for 1 trade. Getting the support, but you lose. The Disruptor and Velo on the Legion Commander. Now they will go straight for Roshan. Yeah, there's no way they can contest this fight as well. They can maybe try and steal it with the Blink Stun of Sand King, but it's going to be a very risky play here. And he might consider it. Is going towards it? Nah, he's going to just push out the middle lane. The Slark might head on. Ooh, nah, they're going to do this. Here we Fly go. Solo. Watch the big plays, Bar on the back line, and Pharaoh gets one kill. Mushi gets the Aegis, Aegis still on the floor, okay, yep, he puts his one in the slot, in the backpack. But now the Lucent Beam onto Fero. meanwhile Isis is just killing off that poor sad little disruptor. Fly solo, Bar strikes up to the cliff, but he will die to the Warrior's Punch, so Jab's getting himself another kill. Two for two trade, they even get the Aegis kill as well, so that's not too bad, not all is lost. And considering things, I would say that was pretty, pretty big win for Warriors Gaming. Yeah, definitely. They were in a position where they wouldn't be able to contest Rosh, but they got rid of the Aegis and got a kill on top of that. For the trade-off of two heroes, which are going to respawn relatively fast since it's just the two supports there. Okay, so Ice Blast, just to mess around with Fiero. And a 7,000 net worth advantage just continuing to grow on the side of Mineski. But without the Aegis, that shouldn't give them the confidence to at least take tier 2s. Has Warriors Gaming actually braved the like this storm? Will they actually have time to catch up right now? I mean, their, their main play is to split up the map, as I said before, and find pickoffs, force Mineski to play their pace, which is defending the towers and grouping up. For not to not get picked off, but uh, in the end, they're just so behind that it's just a lot easier for Mineski to clear the lanes out and group up straight away uh, and push down the tier twos or even go to base. What Mushi, what are you doing, mate? DKB, that all right, maybe he's testing it, maybe it's. He thought he was made in China or something, I don't know. No, dude, he wants to get it to five seconds so that he gets the shorter cooldown. Oh, nice. Tactical, dude, tactical. That's it, that's it. Alright, so Nana, he does get his first damage item, which is the Maelstrom. And next item on the way, still not too sure yet. Bottom lane, you know, Bad Riders alone, Firefly already used, and they are smoked up on the side of Warriors Gaming. We might actually yep. see a big team fight incoming here, as both teams this is what they need. walking to each other. Now with the Burst Strike, looking for the duel as well, they will go for Ice Ice, Moonlight Shadow, Ice Bass coming in, gonna land it into two. But here comes Jabs going in with the Snowball immediately into Velo, looking for the Warriors Punch as well. Looks like Velo should be dying here. Static Storm will not hold them into place, but okay, Reaper Scythe, they will get the kill onto Boogie. Not the ideal kill. But now Nana, looks like he will get the second star, so down he goes. Miracle popping the BKB, trying to go for the other kill onto Nana. Uh, can he get the kill here? But no, actually Lincoln Spear gets out. Whoa, the Death Pulse. Miracle, get regen. Okay, Yo Scepter, I like his itemization. It's going to keep him alive for Mushi, but the Eclipse is still into play. And Mushi on a Beyond God like yep. Street. Fiero will try, tempted to go back in. But a 4 for 3 the trade. as well. And they do know about him, because they're sticking around the Sentry War just in case. And he takes care of the sentry so they know that, okay, Fiero is 
kinda in a still run. Alright, now going oh. for the worst punch they with the Lucent Beam. Well. Snowball. Shadow dances away. He has a Shadow Blade. Do they have detection? Yeah, no, fine. they do not. He could actually go back in. Yep. I, like I don't think he wants plan. to. They're backing off together, so. <laughs> he's gonna start getting some hits in, though, I'm sure. Still yeah, stats. they're keen. He's there got the go. Blade as well here. Alright, so they will go for jabs, forcing Mushi to back off by himself. And, oh, actually, Jab still gets out. Using the shots for good measure. And he's gonna be fine. Pretty interesting turn of events. Like, what looked like should be a one-sided game and doesn't look like it anymore. Is Warriors Gaming actually... You know, if you're Mineski, do you feel the threat that, Mine that Warriors Gaming can actually win you late game? Hmm. I mean... The thing is, they're all open up with Lincoln Spear as well. So, they already have that defensive item. They're going to start building very aggressively the next few items for Mineski. As you can see, there's the butterfly being built up from Mushi, not too far off as well. We got the Maelstrom into BKB for the Marana. He's also still going for a BKB, which is quite interesting. I feel like at this point, he can go for more aggressive items. He's not really going to get killed unless the Slark and, let's say, the Necro jumps on them on the same time, but even then, it's an unrealistic scenario. Since they have other heroes that can protect them as well, such as the Tusk of Snowball. Um, the Batrider... Ha that's the only thing I have problem with this game, is the Batrider is getting caught every single fight. If you didn't notice, bottom lane, when they were sieging uh, their base, he got caught straight away. Uh, that fight, is, again, he got caught in the lane by the Sankey and Velo's legions, I think. So, he hasn't been able to get the Lassoos, and especially since he doesn't have Blink, he can't really initiate to get the Lassoos either, which is very weird. If I could, I'd go for the Crybaby emote Smoke for you, play. dude. I want to put like the Crybaby emote for you when, you when you were talking about how he gets caught out. But, are, are you triggered, Darcy? Yeah. Are you triggered? No, not triggered, I'm just a little surprised about Ice Slice. Generally, his performance is really... Incredible, but this game he hasn't really been showcasing what is really made of. Oh, they want to try it for the Slark, but actually the Sand King will be the one to break the smoke. They're going for the Warriors Punch anyways. Into the Ice Blast, Fiero should be dying here. Yep, easy proc, and they will find two kills. Nice and easy. Without even using the Lasso, so that's pretty darn big for Mineski. They're getting a great advantage, like two big pickoffs. But have they used the Lasso? They have not. Sean? <laughs> like, I, I, I'm thinking about a scenario. I mean, sure, they've used it a few times, but I, I haven't really seen a noticeable lasso from the start of the fight, if you know what I mean. Alright, alright. And, okay, Lena Barracks gone. No buybacks on the side of Warriors Gaming, and it looks like Mineski about to tear a second hole open in this base. Yep. They do have the butterfly and the Luna here. The BKB is almost up as well on the Marana. They are trying to wrap the top lane. Jabs did go back, but the melee barracks will fall anyways, and they will get two lanes. Oh, I spot nice. now popping the BKB. The Necro can't heal himself because he's got the AA blast effect on him. And they and have no way to catch. The and they've got no way to catch them. Yep. That was a really nice AA blast. It hit the Sanking and the Necro there. Which means no blink usage from the Sand King and no healing usage from the Necrofoss there. And Mineski barely took any damage as well. So you just look at the side of Mineski like crazy. The coordination is just on point. And they can go for the top shrine. Their economy is just growing ever so strong. Like we're basically almost at a 20,000 yep. gold lead. Mushi is double the net worth of the Slark basically. And Slark is still so far behind. He has a BKB. But so far he hasn't really had the chance for it to shine. Even if he tries to go to the back line to finish off the supports, like, what do you do about this mushy Luna, who is so farmed, Butterfly, BKB, with the MOM, and the Lincolns, two defensive items. Once again, we go back to the same question, yeah. how do you kill this guy? It's going to be extremely difficult. Not only is he a lot further behind than Mushi, but he has to build a way to be able to kill supports. And as you've seen, like, Slark hasn't really been... In the past, hasn't been really building the fusel blades that often, but 
in the current meta, the supports tend to go Ghost Scepters or they go Glimmer Capes. You need that Diffusal to cancel it out, so you can actually solo kill the supports at the start of the fight when you get the backline. And it just doesn't help against the core heroes though. It doesn't help against Marana, it doesn't help against the Saloon, especially since he has BKB. Both of them have BKB now as well. So, all he can do right now is kill the support heroes first and then leave the cores for last. Kind of like a similar scenario to the last game. Nails in the coffin, they do smoke up. Mineski want to bury Warriors Gaming once and for all. They are so close to making it into the Grand Finals, at least of this qualifier. Looking for the Ice Blast, it's going to be off the mark. Quick reflexes from Velo, who actually brings it out to the right side. So they will not see him, and actually that's a foiled smoke. It's okay, they content themselves with the Shrines. Right, so Lincoln Sphere, BKB, up banana as well. How do you kill the cores? Like like you said, you know, you talk about the diffuser bit, it helps to kill the supports and all. But in this case, how do you kill the cores on the side of Mineski? Is there any way, any saving grace at all? Or do they just need Mineski I mean, to like just throw have, up? They do have the blade mill on Velo. They have the BKB as well up, it just came up now. So if he jumps in, let's say he grabs someone who isn't Lincoln's, or if they trigger the Lincoln's and they grab him with the the ultimate and pop their blade mill and then use utilize the necros ulti on top of that they can kill someone but the oh, thing is yeah, they, they need they to commit so much and here we go this is the fight they wanted uh-huh with the duel and everything they're gonna try and kill the luna but he survives and velo is actually the one gonna be giving the damage away necropho is going for the return reaper side but it will not matter the bkbs have been popped and the slog to also go down three heroes already dead and now with the episode they're gonna try for the saving play but it makes no difference scream yeah, calls the gg game. Mushi is just too fat. He tanked a duel, a static storm, and basically half an epicenter. All that damage yeah, thrown at him. Yeah, but didn't get necro ulti though. That, that, I think that was the only factor why I didn't die. If they managed to get that necro ulti on top, he would have definitely fell down. But he managed to get out of Velo's ulti and pop his BKB just in time before that happened. But yeah, an interesting series here. I, I feel like Maneski was just a better team right now. They're both new teams obviously but it just seemed Mineski just meshed a lot better than WG what do you reckon for me well pretty much all the points you said and at the same time Warriors Gaming they really need to settle on a play style they need to figure out who's the one sacrificing farm because I just feel like when you have all three cores who require farm priority and it really hurts that your four is basically restricted to a lane where he can't really roam around, he can't get an advantage for any of the other cores. Just baby, basically forced into a babysitting role, you know what I mean? So, mm. yeah, pretty much that. But anything else you yeah. want to say, Darcy? No, I think it was just a very interesting... Um, that game, the way they built around the lineup, they didn't want Blink Tagger on Batrider because they didn't feel like they needed him to initiate, he just could just survive in the middle of a fight and dish out as much damage as he can. And he was going for a shivers actually towards the end there as well. So he's just going to be extremely tanky. And they have three heroes that are already very hard to kill on top of that. So Mirana, Luna and the Batrider self all these Lincolns up, making it very hard for the duel or the Necro ulti to come out. So I think it was just a the itemization was very good from Maneski since they didn't think they needed to play a pickoff game. They could just group up and snowball those towers down after they had those Lincoln spheres. Mm -hmm. And definitely, like, great job from Mushi. You can see he had a perfect, flawless game 13 0 and 11. And interesting, though, like, you know, like, uh, the Hurricane Pike and the Butterfly came after all these defensive items. You know, he went for the Mask of Madness first with the Treads. Usually, that's not a very good. To start out, usually you want like at least a casual Yasha or something, or even just a Dragon Lance. But no, I mean just straight up BKB and Lincoln's really, really worked out for Mineski, and that itemization, like you said, just great stuff. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, that was our first series of the PGL.